Corm. Corm. We just had a lovely dinner at the, in the little town, which is super cute. And then we're just turning back home. <sighs> it's a really beautiful evening. Welcome back to another episode of Sailing Indiana. You haven't seen much of us in the last few months, but we'll be explaining what's been happening with our YouTube channel and our lives shortly. For now, you rejoin us in Corm, in Galicia, Northwest Spain, as we prepare to sail further south to Camarinas. So There's a dinghy on the shore there. That's Corm in the distance. Indiana, just in front of the boat with the sail up. Yeah, and a few other little boats dotted around, so it's a good harbour actually. We used to have um, a lot of fishing beds through the middle and you couldn't you couldn't anchor through there, but you can now by the looks of it. So we we're just outside of that area just in case you still couldn't, but highly recommend a stop. trying to head to Camarinas. So there's a um, bit of a southerly blow coming through starting tomorrow and onwards. So if we, we'd, we'd be stuck here if we didn't move now. Not that it's a bad place to be, but if we can make any ground today, then we will. It's 4.30 here. Um, should be four and a half, five hours to get just around a, a little bit further. Um, so we can get there about nine o'clock. Hopefully drop the anchor somewhere and um, yeah, and then have a lovely evening. So that's the plan, but um, engines making that sort of whirring sound when we're in forward, which is something to do with the gearbox. It's just one of those things that we now have playing on our mind and we're just, every time we go somewhere, it's just, we're all on tenter hooks and it's not nice, really. So we're just hoping that it's something that we can get to the bottom of and, and it will just make our lives a lot more enjoyable coming out here and not having to worry at least about that yeah the windlass stopped working as well and we just went to bring the anchor up so it doesn't come up anymore so i had to handball that up myself so that's another thing that's now on the list which are those issues you can deal with um if they come on their own but having having that and then other issues that you don't know what they are <sighs> yeah so it's um starting to grate on us a little bit flying in the wind there. Not a breath of wind. And uh, pretty glassy conditions out here, so. Uh, looks like another motor for Indiana. Got to get round this point here, it's all a bit jagged. So we're gonna give it a wide berth, but you um, can imagine what that kicks up like in a, in a gale. Not a very friendly place, I can imagine. Today we've got two knots of wind, which is probably something to do with our apparent <laughs> wind. Um, still very rolly though, um, still getting rolled around a bit, even though there's nothing visible on the surface. But yeah, we're making good time and um, we've been out for maybe two hours now, so it's got two and a half hours left and we'll just tuck into a nice little anchorage for the night. We're gonna anchor in this little middle one. There's like three different little beaches just there. 
Oh, that, that, and that. So we're gonna be in the other one. And there's no one else around. And it's so flat today, isn't it? It's a little town here. We've arrived, so well, lots of flies around. But this is um, Moxia, or I think it's Mogia, Mogia. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's opposite Camarinas. So if we look behind me uh, there, I think, yeah, that's probably it. That's Camarinas. So this is opposite that one there. We've got a um, southerly coming in tomorrow. So Camarinas, as much as it says it's all round protection, we thought, well, we'll just go on the south side and there'll be some protection there we're gonna try it tonight and then there's that a bit of a blow tomorrow so we'll see how we hold and, and if we're protected enough if not there is um mug, mugs magia mushia if not there is magia marina just around the corner so we can pop in there which we might do because it's getting up to about 30 35 knots on friday um possibly a little bit thursday as well so we'll see um there's no points for bravery sitting out here and also then if it is that windy and choppy you can't take the tender anywhere so you're sort of housebound so we might just go to a marina then we can at least pop out and do a bit of shopping and things like that yeah we'll just play it by ear so far so good a little fishing boat in the uh background there yeah. so we just sank it off a nice little beach over here it's actually buoyed so there's um a line across it so can't really take the tender onto it unless you can just sneak over the line but there's um also a beach just here and a little one there yeah we've got plenty of options for heading out as i say we'll be here tonight maybe tomorrow night and then look at our options <laughs> what's on fire <laughs> the toast bloody hell it's close the bedroom door actually oh yeah Whoopsie. Well, that's how you cook it. <laughs> it's done now. Yeah, it's okay. These things happen. The offending items. Mmm, worth the fire. <laughs> Coronation chick, what is it? Yeah, like Coronation chickpea salad. Coronation chickpea salad. Yes. And creams and crispy bread. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A little bit better, just because. Yeah. Why not? Using up things. <laughs> Using up all the things. A job for today. Yeah, so in, in, in search of what's wrong with the windlass, checked inside and got, uh, there's a box that supplies the power to the windlass um, and also the button. So yeah, the windlass is here and yeah, that's the, the deck switch. So that should retrieve the anchor and the anchor chain, but it's, um, yeah, we tried it the other day, the other morning and it didn't work. So yeah, I looked in the electricity box, um, got the little uh, multimeter out and we're getting power up to it. And then just sort of try bridging the two connectors on the top um, and nothing happens. So there's nothing going then from that point forward into the, into the windlass itself, which is not the best news because that means then there's an issue either with the motor of the windlass or something like that. <laughs> yeah, so worst case scenario, I suppose. But yeah, so that's the um, offending item. And it could be that, yeah, we need to just, we, we might need to take it out and just get into it, rebuild it check if there's anything that's broken if it's motor then that needs to be replaced so it's whether we do that now or whether we because we, we, we're thinking of leaving tomorrow and, and heading a bit further down towards muros um so it might be that we just save that job for um another day like i can retrieve the anchor by hand it's not ideal especially if there's a bit of wind like there was the other morning um it just makes it really 
difficult. You've got to like drive forwards on the anchor and, and bring it up a bit, then we drift back and vice versa. So, but it's it's not impossible. So it doesn't mean we're not safe. Um, it just means that the yeah, conditions were a bit hairy and we were dragging. For example, we couldn't quickly bring the anchor up and reset it somewhere. It would be a bit of a bit of a issue. I think if we get to Miros tomorrow, then we'll have like a week there, and it's then something I can look at during the week. And I think there's going to be more chandleries and, and more places we could get something delivered um if we need to order a part so it's, it's possibly easier to get a bit further down the coast and, and try it there yeah, it looks old but obviously these things keep working as long as you service them we never have but we've not really done any anchoring not really like living on the anchor and things like that so it's it's not really been used much by us um, but it does need servicing so um yeah it could be i think this plate might come up i've got, I've got the manual i've downloaded that from on, online uh, i think guy sent me that actually it's just gonna be a case of taking bits off but i think really the whole unit needs to come out because there's a lot that works inside of that and, and if any of that decided to spring overboard we'd be in trouble so yeah looking underneath it there's four bolts that go through and i think that's pretty much all that holds it on it looks like there's been another windlass here before there's some old holes not really sure what happens further back yeah there's not much out here other than yeah uh, under here getting attacked. <laughs> so weird. I know. So you guys are going mental over there as well. Sorry about all that. That was, <laughs> that was, um, I think it's a uh, communion day, Catholic sort of, oh, I'm not sure, I'm not gonna say the wrong thing, but yeah, it's a religious day. Um, and they celebrate with fireworks during the day, apparently, so not cool if you're a dog. Looks like a bit of corrosion around there and underneath there's like this, I'm guessing like salt water, de salt deposits or something like that, but not sure. So making a connection now. It sort of jumps up. Hang on. I'm trying to make a firmer connection. That's with the black one on the bottom and the red one on the top. They might not matter which ones. It just sort of jumps a little bit. What does it mean? <laughs> So fault finding outside, there's still power getting to the motor. Um, so I took the cover off the side of the windlass and got to the motor and there's a reading on the ohms setting. So it seems like that motor is okay then. Um, and something else is going on maybe between the foot switch and there or with the foot switch, I'm not sure. So we're gonna take the cover back off the whisper box, which is in underneath the foot switch again and just have another proper look in there and get the multimeter on everything and make sure we're doing, doing everything right. So we've checked, um, got continuity coming back. I also took um, a negative off of the light bulb there and just put negative to negative from then the box. And it's all pointing to the fact that everything's fine. <laughs> so basically when the switch is activated, it's then we should have voltage, but we're, we're not. But it's there with just the tester. When it once it's under low, that's then that it, there's a problem. It seems a little bit like the negative is the issue or at least that um it's not obviously making a circuit somehow so i'm going to trace that negative the big negative back from here check everything at the isolator switch as well which is the on and off switch that we've got and then yeah and hope there's something obvious at that end yeah i don't know yeah it's we i mean it's a it's a good thing obviously checked that it's then the motor looks like it's fine in the windlass itself switch looks like it's fine it's 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 working so that's the expensive stuff so um this is just the annoying stuff where you've got to chase cables and things there's a positive there but um yeah we'll see we'll just trace it back and see what we got 
So here's the sort of breaker isolator switch that we put in and out. Yeah, I tested the back of these. So I've run the multimeter to the ne a negative straight off of the battery onto here and then activated the foot switch. So it's basically that we haven't got, when it's, when it's activated, then the circuit effectively. Yeah, um, just chase the, the negative um, black cable through and that goes under here. So next step is to look at the batteries. So it turns out that there's been a revelation <laughs> in the form of this. This was tucked down there, just all on its own, just like this. Yeah, at some point installing the batteries in a rush when we left Falmouth, I just totally ignored <laughs> this back cable and just not put it in, on, yeah, where it's supposed to go. <sighs> I just couldn't make it up. I really couldn't make it up. <laughs> so don't install batteries when you're in a rush to go somewhere the night before that you cross the English Channel. <laughs> because that's what's happened. Um, we haven't anchored yet since we've been in Spain. Uh, we didn't anchor in France, so we didn't anchor in Spain until we got to Corm. Dropped the anchor, everything was fine for a, for a night or two, and then yeah, I went to leave, and that's when it happened. So, yeah, didn't really put two and two together that it could be something to do with this end. Um, so it's just ridiculous. <laughs> and I feel a bit silly, but these things happen. <laughs> so we don't have a broken windlass, everything's fine, and I just need to put this cable on top of a battery terminal and um happy days off we go sailing again so yeah it's been a great exercise in testing and then that side of it but <sighs> lessons learned so moment of truth does it work <laughs> yes it does <laughs> and that's the problem solved <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hola, buenos dias. Buenas. O buenas tardes. O buenas noches. Buenas noches. Noches. Sí. Hello. <laughs> Thanks for watching that. Yeah. Sorry there was a lot of um, <laughs> testing and electrical stuff to do with the windlass. It might have bored a few of you, but then it might have been some that were interested, so uh, we kept it in. Yeah, it ended in me obviously being a right Wally because oh, Wally. <laughs> the windlass was working all along, but. Um, there we go, it's good to check. But to check. now we know. But now we know. Gotta check. test these things. Test these things. Yeah, we are a little behind schedule on the videos. Just a teeny tiny little bit. We took some much needed time over the Christmas period, had some land time, we saw some family and friends, which was really nice. We needed a little bit of a reset because we work full time, as many of you know, mm. that with sailing full time and trying to navigate wind and weather is quite draining and yeah. we felt like we really needed to kind of take a little step back and just reset reset so we've reset very much so <laughs> and here we are yeah you haven't yeah. seen much of us for the last three months i think yeah. so sorry, sorry. yeah sorry i haven't posted a video we've got content to post it was just that we needed a little bit of a break from it and i think um we took the winter as a bit of a time to get off the boat and yeah and do just that yeah reset like oh, you said holiday time we're back now and there's a lot of content to show you then from over the winter where we um where we had the boat things that have happened to the boat since which we won't uh give away now stay tuned stay tuned yeah there's been a lot happening in the background so we've got a lot to catch you up on yeah big we'll, news there's big, big news as well, actually, yeah. Big, there is big news. There's big, big news. Big news. 
So you've got to stick around. So you've got to stick around. <laughs> um, but we're going to try and catch up as quick as we can on the content so that we're running more with real time. So we're just going to sort of film as we go from here. And um, it should just be business as usual from, from here on out with the videos, I'm hoping. Sorry for... Yeah, sorry for not... the extended break and yeah. no sort of word of warning. Yeah. We did need it and thank you for sticking around and we will be bringing you a lot more content. Where do we go next week? Where do we go next week? So mm. we're going to go from Mukshia. 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 We're probably Mukshia. butchering that terribly, so yeah, yeah, well... let us know. <laughs> <laughs> from the Mukshia down to Miros, I think. Miros is beautiful and the anchorage was stunning where we were. So there's some really cool footage of us at night and um, coming back, dinging back to the boat and it's just beautiful with the town lit in the background. So yeah, next video after this one's going to be yeah, a good one. Yeah, we'll see you next time. See you next week. See you next week. Thanks for watching. Sailing in Miana.